good evening. It's an honor to be here representing Biola University. And uh, Bishop Blake, thank you so much for uh, opening up your home uh, for us this evening and this weekend. And I, I want to say thank you to the architects of Together LA for the work that you have done uh, really for many, many months to make this day possible. I'm really stoked to be here tonight and to um, know that I, like, I'm in the presence of some like really incredible people and leaders here in Los Angeles and get to hear Tim Keller, uh, who I knew from back in my Boston days. And I know it sounds like I'm name dropping. Colin Powell once told me never to be a name dropper. So some, some time ago, I was living in one of the world's most densely populated cities, spending a year there. And a man who had become my mentor went for an early morning walk with me. And as we walked, he said something that changed the way I think about life. In the middle of my wondering that year about what is it like to kind of live in the city and and feel so anonymous and feel like I'm making very little impact and making no difference, it seemed, for the cause of Christ. This mentor of mine began quoting out of Matthew chapter 10. He began rattling off that part where Jesus says, if anybody really wants to be my disciple, you pick up your cross and you follow me. But then he got to the point where Jesus said to his disciples, whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. I played that again in my head. Whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives the one who sent me. I listened a few minutes ago to Father Boyle, who is living a profoundly receivable life. And because he is making himself receivable in the spirit of kinship, People are receiving through him the profound, transforming love of Christ. And I'm convinced God wanted me to hear and receive those 15 words on the crowded streets of that city, streets where I felt like I didn't fit in, a city where I wondered about my influence. As a follower of Jesus, since then, I've lived in the metropolitan area of Boston. I've lived now in the metropolitan area of Los Angeles, and I keep thinking about those words that Jesus said to his disciple, whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. What does it mean as the followers of Jesus to be the receivable people of God, a receivable church, Receivable organizations, receivable ministries, receivable community development programs, and receivable art galleries, and poetry houses, and coffee shops, and receivable film companies, and receivable social outreach networks, and receivable um, homeless shelters, and crisis pregnancy places, and homeless and, and, and food trucks. What does it mean to be receivable in the city where God has placed us. And what does it mean when we hear those words as leaders? When Jesus says to us, whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. And I ask that question at Biola University, what does it mean to be a receivable university? What does that mean for us? And I flash back 107 years when the founders of Biola, this businessman named Stewart and this preacher named Horton, they knew at the turn of the century that something was happening in the city of Los Angeles. This was a different city. This was poised to become one of the great global cities of the world. It was a time of incredible growth for Los Angeles. It was a time of, of, of self-definition, and, and, and things were happening. The aqueducts were coming down, bringing water from the north. The Panama Canal was connecting these two great oceans. Hollywood was em in its embryonic stages. Things were happening in this city, this United States urban metropolitan center that's on the Pacific Rim was beginning to grow and develop. And, the founders of Biola decided that they're going to lay a cornerstone on that first building, the Bible Institute of Los Angeles. And at that cornerstone speech, this is what Lyman Stewart said. He said, our doors will be open every day of the year, and all people, 
without reference to race or color or class or creed or previous conditions will always be welcome here. This university started not many miles from here on the corner of 6th and Hope Street as a place that would be a receivable educational institution, this gospel presence. Not long after the school began, on top of that 13-story building, then one of the tallest buildings in Los Angeles, were hoisted these neon signs, this new technology, seven-foot-high neon red letters that spelled those two words, ten letters, that said, Jesus saves. And the meaning behind those iconic signs was that the grace of God through Christ can bring peace to the city, can reconcile differences, can restore hope, can loose chains of the bondage, can free captives, can restore broken relationships, can forgive sins as we receive God's faith through Christ. But for Biola, it took more than those neon signs perched on the top of the downtown building. It took really thinking about what it means to be a receivable place, receivable to the city and neighborhoods, receivable, as we heard a few minutes ago through Father Boyle, means listening to each other far more than talking at each other. Biola's founder, Lyman Stewart, he wanted the students of Biola, the young women and men who studied there, to, to, to get engaged in the city. And he would talk to them about how his burden for the less fortunate, for the immigrant, for the neglected, for the abandoned, for the homeless, for the jobless, for the hopeless, that we were going to do something about this. And it was during the early years, Lyman Stewart, he, he started these Jewish mission houses. He founded the Union Rescue Mission, the San Fernando Street Mission, the Sonora Gospel Mission, the San Pedro Siemens Mission, the Mission Home, many others. And when a leading advocate in Los Angeles, who was an advocate for the social gospel, wrote him a letter pleading with him, you know what, you need to be more concerned about the gospel in deed than in word, this is how Lyman Stewart responded. He said, I do not lose sight of the fact that reformation is man's work, but regeneration is God's work. The formal is valuable to society, but counts only for a time. The latter is not only valuable to society, but it counts for eternity. So here we are at Biola 107 years later, continuing to lean into what it means to be a receivable place in one of the world's most influential cities. We have a long way to go. And I acknowledge that we need to keep on building bridges from a posture of humility and unity. And with our 6,400 students today, we continue to ask ourselves how we can engage more with the city, loving the city more, listening to the city more. We have a lot to offer, but we have a far more to learn from the city. I want to say to you, we need you. And we're so honored to be at the table of Together LA and in conversations with LA's Christian leaders to learn and to partner because the days of competition and the days of going at it alone are over with. Not only is collaboration the... Not only is collaboration the, the desire of the rising generation, but it's, it's the biblical way of doing things. More than ever, we're seeking ways to link arms with churches and organizations in many communities of Los Angeles. And our, our students are, are rolling up their sleeves to be engaged through music and media and film and justice and evangelism and service and commerce and the arts. And we continue to ask that question, how do we become increasingly a university with a firm center but soft edges? Firm, center, soft edges mean we keep thinking biblically about everything that we do. We're doing this on our undergraduate programs, our graduate programs. We're doing this in our school of business and theology, intercultural studies, psychology and education. We're doing this for our Center for Christian Thought. We're doing this for our Center for Christianity, Culture and the Arts. We're doing this for our Center for Marriage and Relationships. We'll do this in a few weeks through a day with John Perkins on our campus. We'll do this in April when we'll have a campus conversation with Cornell West, Robbie George, and Rick Warren, sponsored by our Tory Honors Institute. 
I, I hope you can join us. I think there's even information in your packets about that event. We simply want to engage in the conversation and do so in the spirit of humbly listening and serving together because that's how Jesus said we make ourselves receivable. And by the way, this receivable idea is far more about being receivable than being received. You see, being received is all about us, how people respond to us, but being receivable is about Jesus because sometimes people won't receive us when we make ourselves receivable, and that's okay. Paul talked about that, saying you know, we are the aroma of Christ. To some, we'll be receivable and we'll be the smell of life. To others, we won't be received, but we'll be the smell of death to them. But either way, we need to smell like Jesus and this room is filled with those whose leadership has the aroma of Jesus, what he had in mind when he said to his disciples, whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me, and you are building bridges and you're not building walls. You are loving God with your heart and your soul and your strength and your mind, and from that love, you are loving your neighborhoods, you're loving your communities, you're loving those more than yourselves, and you're not putting on steel-toed boots to kick Jesus into your culture, the heresy out of your brother, but you're walking barefoot, the very position Jesus' disciples took when he said, take off your shoes, I'm washing your feet, I want you to go out and do likewise. And I pray that we keep on having that spirit of being the receivable people of God. And we do that because we are earnest about loving Jesus more. And I know that there are people in this city that are praying and fasting and believing God for a spiritual awakening in Los Angeles. And out of this Holy Spirit renewal done by a bunch of sinners saved by grace and resurrected through Christ, I know that out of this spiritual renewal will flow acts of goodness and mercy, the likes of which this city has never seen. And as this happens, we'll begin looking like another city, and that is the new Jerusalem, where we have the shalom of God. And as we continue in this posture, we must believe that God can and will sovereignly grace our city in ways that defy our own expectations. I like the way Francis Schaeffer put it in his commentary on Jeremiah called Death in the City. And he said, in order for there to be life in the city, the rising generation in that city needs to do two things. They need to be care deeply about two things. One is reformation and the other is revival. And reformation means committing to the truth of the Bible and revival refer, refers to the powerful work of the Holy Spirit in the church. And Reformation speaks to returning to the all-authoritative teaching of the scriptures and impressing it on our hearts and having it affect the way in which we make decisions, the truth of God's word that has not changed. It is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And revival means loving God so much with our hearts that we expect the Holy Spirit to do something powerful in our midst. It's being in proper relationship with the Spirit, where the Holy Spirit is so powerfully at work in us that we as a repentant and broken people turn to Jesus in new and reviving ways. If you want renewal in the city, Schaefer said, you can't be concerned about one without being concerned about the other. It's reformation return to the authoritative word of God and it's revival, allowing the Holy Spirit to cleanse our hearts through his fire. And the truth is the city is watching the church. They watch how we work with each other as Christians, and they watch how we engage with those who don't follow Christ at all. And I hear myself telling students at Biola that we need to live in this humble posture of being receivable, of walking the way of Jesus-like kindness, and this means combative and defensive posturing will give way to listening and engaging. It means being more concerned about what we are for than what we are against. It means we link our arms with each other and not lock our doors from each other. And we need to demonstrate to the city that we are people with firm centers and soft edges. And to be receivable means we live a life committed to the truth that only Jesus saves. You see, the. That neon sign that you saw on the video just a few minutes ago, erected on Biola's original building, 
a few miles from here on 6th and Hope Street. It's still in the city today. It's actually a few blocks from that original place. It's illuminated down the road from there at the old United Artists Theater, the place where Charlie Chaplin and Mary Pickford back in the 1920s would perform. Today it's the hip, trendy Ace Hotel. It was a few winters ago I was invited by LAPD to actually go on a helicopter shift on a Saturday night through downtown Los Angeles. And I sat behind these two officers, one the pilot, the other the policeman, both with like holsters sashed to their chest, and I sat in the back seat watching it all happen. And we lifted off from the top of the downtown police headquarters. And for the next 150 minutes, I was in awe. We were flying from here to there across Los Angeles, from Hollywood to Venice Beach, over by LAX, and to downtown to Beverly Hills. And we were on the last hour of our shift, and I began telling those two officers, I said, if you look just down there below, you can kind of see the place where it all began, Biola University. They knew I was the president there. I said, there on the corner of 6th and Hope Street, we had this building. It was a tall building then, 13 stories tall. And on top of it, it had these red neon signs that said, Jesus saves. And when I said that, one of the officers turned around to me and he said, I know those signs. I said, you do? He said, yeah, I do. He said, they're actually on another building a few blocks from here. I said, that's right, they are. He said, let me tell you something. He said, we are told as we fly these helicopters around this part of the city that if it's dark and foggy and we can't see our way, we look for those Jesus save signs in order to find our way home. I don't think you really knew what he was saying, but I had these shivers that ran down my spine. Jesus saves in his redemptive work that links us together, LA. These two words must be at the heart of our calling to this city. We are called to be the repairer of broken walls. We are called to be the restorer of the breach. We are called to be a redemptive voice for that which is broken. We do this not with a bullhorn, but we do this with a towel and a basin. And those two words are still guiding people across this city to hope and restoration and reconciliation and forgiveness on those times in their lives when it's foggy and they can't see their way. And more than ever, we need to work together, LA, to keep the light on and let the world see in us the hope of Christ. And I am praying that from our work together, we will radiate streams of influence in every sector of our city and from our work together, may we see a renewed commitment to prayer, to worship, to evangelism, to missions, to service, to imagination, to courageous faith and kingdom advancement unlike anything we've ever witnessed. All for the glory of God, all for the proclamation of the living and exalted Christ, redeeming, healing, life-giving, sin-forgiving, King of kings, Lord of lords, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at biola.edu.